What's up guys, welcome back. I'm sure you've noticed in the last 24 hours, NEO has exploded over 50% growth in the last 24 hours. But why? Especially when Ethereum has come out with some really big news today of a planned upgrade to its system. So how can this happen? How can Ethereum stay at the same price and NEO explode? What happened today? We will talk about that. Also, I want to discuss why I invest in ICOs personally. I think there's a lot of FUD, fear, confusion, uncertainty, doubt, all the bad stuff about ICOs. But why I choose to still invest in some of them, not all of them. A lot of them are not worth it. A lot of them are stupid. Decentralizing sand, that's a real thing. There's a sand coin out there. There's things for everything. Some of them, though, have really good prospects. I will tell you why I invest. So, having a look at the market today. I'm sure some of you, at least NEO holders, probably refreshed a couple times. To see it at 32, nearly 33, it keeps going up. So when I started preparing this video, I think it was at 31. Not that it takes me ages, but I think it was at 31. It's growing really fast. Now it's nearly 33. Just keeps going up. You can see this line vertical along that wall. Great day for holders, a sad day for buyers. But who knows, potentially even by now you could still in long term make your money double, triple, who knows. People saying $100 by the end of the year. No one knows, but potentially realistic. Let me explain why. The Chinese are very patriotic. They're very nationalistic. They like to invest in their own companies or domestic companies. So for example, when Google tried to invade China with Uber, they weren't having it, it wasn't doing well, Google sold the company. Why? Because there was a Chinese alternative. Facebook doesn't have mass market adoption in China like it does everywhere else. There's a bigger one than Facebook in China. I forget the name of it, but it exists. It makes more money per year than Facebook in China, social media online. The reason for that is Chinese would much rather invest in something domestic than international. It's part of their heritage, it's part of their history, it's their culture. Neo pandas to them far more than Ethereum. There's a lot of Chinese people. That's where we're seeing some of the money come from. And that totally makes sense. And credit to them, can't fault them for that. Now, some coins have risen huge amounts. If you have a look at trending, Gainers and losers, this is always an interesting one. Happy Creator Coin, up 1,300%. Okay. These are probably one of those pump and dumps. There's only $17,000 in it in the last 24 hours. So, But some of them huge. The lowest is at 30% gains today with NEO making number 14 with 61%. 61% growth. Wow. Now, I know I'm going to get questions, is now a good time to buy? Generally, I'd always say no. I'd always say when you're at an all-time high, you don't buy. That's the time to be scared. When things are coming down, when people don't like a coin, when people keep saying it's bad, that's an interesting time to buy. But not right now, because everyone's saying it's good. But who knows? It's growing so fast that potentially this is a floor we'll never see again. You know, tomorrow could be 40, tomorrow could be 50, end of the year could be 100. I don't know. Be interesting to see what happens. But leapfrogging IOTA Dash and Ethereum Classic in market cap. It's coming for Litecoin next, but there's still a very long way to go before that happens. But roughly around the same coins, same amount of coins in circulation, so they'd be around the same price. So that's interesting to see. Now, Moving on to some news, Ethereum. They came out with some news today about launching an upgrade to the system called Plasma. Now it's only planned upgrade, but in theory, let's have a look at the white paper sort of. In theory, it's a side chain. So basically what Plasma aims to do is to execute smart contracts in a scalable fashion, potentially scaling to billions per second. 
So potentially solving all the issues the network currently has by speeding and uploads. And how does it do that? A little bit different to the Lightning Network, although Ethereum does have that planned in Raiden in the future. Plasma aims to create mini blockchains within the Ethereum blockchain. So if there's a certain amount of things that need to happen in the execution of a contract, let's say 10 things, essentially all it would need to do with Plasma is to put in one input on the Ethereum blockchain, all eight, nine, 10 of them happen on a smaller version, which is not recorded on the main blockchain until the output comes, reducing the amount of things that need to happen on the blockchain, main blockchain, from 10 to 2, speeding things up. So in my mind, when they've chosen the word plasma, it's because plasma is a very small part of blood, the life stream, the energy that makes us operate. So it's a very apt name in plasma. I'm not sure what Raiden's about, but there you go. Ah, Mortal Kombat, of course. Raiden was the guy with electric, right? Yes, that all makes sense now. Mystery solved. What an ICO allows you to do is to buy in bulk. You cannot do that easily once the coin is on the exchanges. Not unless you're talking about a huge volume one like Bitcoin or Ethereum. But if you're trying to buy one of these smaller ones, which usually ICOs are, that's how they all start. If you want to buy a large order, you're gonna struggle on an exchange. You have to buy up the buy orders. The price will continue to rise as you're buying. So you're getting less coins by buying them. An ICO, you solve that problem. You get a set price for them. So you can buy in bulk and usually you can get a discount if you participate in an ICO. Discount ranges anywhere from three to 30% off. So if you count that, you get your discount and you get to buy in bulk, ICOs can sometimes prove to be very lucrative. It's why I invest in ICOs. I think one of the problems that people have with ICOs is that when there's a lot, it crashes precious Ethereum. Ethereum's precious to a lot of people because a lot of people invested in it, right? So why does an ICO crash Ethereum? Surely if people are buying Ethereum, to put into an ICO en masse, the price of Ethereum should go, go up. Theoretically, that's true, except when you factor in that those who are receiving the funds through the ICO are quickly selling the Ethereum for a profit. It ends up being a seller's market and drives the price down, clogs up the network. People don't like ICOs. So if you're looking for coins, potentially have a thought, see if you'd like to check out some ICOs. I'm not telling you to invest in them, but if you were to get in and some coins, ICOs, be a rich man today, I'm sure you can name the coins that would have made you a lot of money. There's always trains leaving the station every single day. If you knew what you knew today, yesterday, you could have made a lot of money. I know I could. Every day there's a train leaving, it's just about being on the right one. And I read something pretty funny on Coindesk about UK police wanting to make it easier to seize Bitcoins. The main reason for that, or the main challenges that they're having, is driven by a lack of institutional knowledge among British police officials, which is a nice way of saying they don't understand. They don't know how to do it. So this is the problem that a lot of people face. Imagine currently, there are so few people that understand how cryptocurrencies work, how to buy them, where to sell, etc. Imagine a world where a lot more people do. What if we got to a point where half of people understand how to use cryptocurrencies, or at least how to buy them, or at least how they work? What would that do for the price of them? What would that do for mass market adoption? What would that do for shops being able to use them? I would love to be able to use them. So, Bitcoin is generally for the younger generation. But, 
more and more people are learning about it. Now, here, here's what I think. Imagine a world where there aren't 12.5 Bitcoins coming into existence every 10 minutes like we do now. And I know that won't last for much longer. I think there's about another thousand days. Then that gets cut down to about six. But eventually, there are going to be no more Bitcoins produced. It'll be scarce. What would that do to the price? What will that do? So the reason why price is important, right? I'll tell you a story. At my work, people know I've made quite a bit of money. And it kind of just came out, but everyone's asking me about Bitcoin. Everyone's asking me how they can get rich. When one person makes it, 40, 50 other people want to know how they've done it. At least the ones who hear about it, at least the ones who are related to them. So the more people that are making money today, the better it is for mass market adoption. That's why it's important everyone here who is early is making money. Now, once we get to the point where there is no inflation anymore with Bitcoin, there are no more being produced. We are a total market cap of, I think, 21 million Bitcoins. Then we'll have a real and fair distribution of wealth. This is why it's a real digital evolution of money. It's not fair that someone somewhere can print out money, keep it for themselves, deflates everyone else's value of money. It's not shared out correctly. And this would be the most fair way of doing it by having a set amount that doesn't suffer from inflation. I'm going to briefly touch on these. Russia launching blockchain pilot in the health industry, much like you might say patient touring, although the premise is slightly different. Illinois is to trial blockchain tech in a bid to track medical licenses. There are a lot of companies that could benefit from a blockchain, having distributed trust based models of storing data is potentially a revolutionary way of driving down costs, admin costs, all sorts of costs. Now, the problem that patient Tory has is that it's not government backed. So if the Russians are going to plan to introduce it into their healthcare system, they can essentially create their own coin if they want to, but they haven't yet. Yet. Microsoft getting in on blockchain. Microsoft themselves. People can't say that Bitcoin's worth nothing, that it's a Ponzi scheme, that it's fake. When people like chief technology officer of Microsoft's cloud computing division say things like, we think blockchain is going to potentially transform every industry. We're looking at a revolution as big as the internet in blockchain. When you have people like Bill Gates who are saying Bitcoin cannot be stopped, that it's the future. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency and that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. That's very hard to argue with. People who don't understand it would find that hard to argue with. So do your research, guys. Crypto is here to stay. Check out your coins that you want to invest in. Potentially check out some ICOs. See if you think they'd be good prospects. Good luck out there. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.